Next few heavy missions all require we expend the center core, but should have at least one mission next year where we recover it. Astrobotic Griffin, John Edwards, the vice president of Falcon Launch Vehicles at SpaceX, said this big news. This hints that the center booster of Falcon Heavy, traditionally expendable, might soon be recovered and potentially reused. And we're going to see that in the Astrobotic Griffin mission later this year. So how will this happen? What challenges have they faced? And can they make a breakthrough? Let's find out in today's episode of TechMap. Yes, we will see all three boosters land successfully soon because the Astrobotic Griffin mission is set to take place this year with continuous advancements in technology and engineering. Reusing the entire first stage is becoming more feasible. This will be a monumental achievement in the history of SpaceX itself. This mission isn't just a testament to SpaceX's technical prowess but also a significant milestone for NASA. The Griffin Lander, a large and complex structure, will carry the Viper, Volatile's investigating polar exploration rover, to the Nobili crater near the moon's south pole. This critical mission, with a development cost of over $400 million, is designed to safely and accurately land a variety of payloads, from rovers to larger cargo. Griffin, made from sturdy aluminum, can carry up to 475 kilograms, making it ideal for transporting scientific equipment and exploration tools. Its automatic sensor system ensures a safe landing even on rugged and dangerous terrain. Astrobotics Griffin Mission 1, GM-1, represents a new era in lunar exploration. By landing near the South Pole, Griffin will deploy Viper to conduct the first precise measurements of lunar water ice. Part of NASA's CLPS, Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, Griffin will provide a stable platform for Viper to disembark and begin its mission. As the largest lunar lander since the Apollo missions, Griffin's accurate landing near the Nobili crater will open a new chapter in space resource utilization and deep space exploration. Although the exact payload mass for the astrobotic Griffin mission hasn't been confirmed, current estimates within the community suggest it could be six tons maximum. While this figure is speculative, it somehow reflects the scale of this mission. This payload includes not only the Griffin lander, but also various important scientific and technological equipment. John John Edwards' tweet suggests that there's a possibility of more than one launch, where all three boosters will be recovered. It's indeed an exciting prospect for the upcoming missions, isn't it? They haven't made it so far. So, how will they land and recover the center booster of Falcon Heavy? Many of us thought they had given up on recovering and reusing the center booster, right? Actually, in the past, they have tried to recover Falcon Heavy's center core. In the STP-2 mission, June 2019, the center core failed to land successfully on the drone ship. Elon Musk explained that this mission was highly complex, and the center booster had to follow a difficult trajectory, leading to it traveling at high speed and far from the coast. However, let's rewind to two months earlier. During the Arabsat 6A mission in April 2019, SpaceX achieved a significant milestone by successfully landing all three boosters, including the center core, for the first time. Although the center core later toppled over on the drone ship due to rough sea conditions, valuable experience gained showed that optimizing the launch trajectory is key to successful recovery. This suggests that with a carefully adjusted launch trajectory, SpaceX can ensure the safe return of all three boosters after completing their mission. Currently, the details of the launch trajectory for the Astrobotic Griffin mission haven't been disclosed but are expected to be revealed closer to the launch date, no earlier than November this year. It can be speculated that this trajectory will be designed to support SpaceX's goal of recovering and reusing the center booster, continuing to set new standards for sustainable and efficient space travel. One of the crucial upgrades needed is to enhance the landing system, including improvements to the landing legs and control systems, so they can withstand the heavy impact when touching down. This is especially important because the center booster has to land far offshore on a drone ship where weather can be unpredictable. A key factor in booster recovery is efficient fuel allocation. Ensuring that each booster has enough fuel for the burns and safe landing is challenging, especially since payload weight directly affects the fuel needed. I'm really curious about whether they can save enough fuel for the process. If they can, and successfully recover all three boosters, it will mark a new historical milestone. Falcon Heavy has never completely recovered all three boosters in a single launch. Have you ever wondered why? This is no accident. It's a direct result of the rocket's design and purpose. Falcon Heavy was designed to carry extremely heavy payloads to high orbits. To achieve this, SpaceX employs a smart strategy. 
sacrificing the center core to maximize performance. Let's break down how it works. The two side boosters provide massive initial thrust, then detach and safely land. The center core, instead of detaching early, continues to push the second stage and payload much further and higher than the side boosters. This strategy allows Falcon Heavy to achieve significantly higher Delta V for the second stage and payload, sending them straight to their target orbit. This is the main reason Falcon Heavy is the go-to choice for missions requiring heavy payloads to high orbits. However, the trade-off is the greatly reduced ability to recover the center core. Landing the center core becomes extremely challenging due to the long distance, high speed, and limited remaining fuel. SpaceX deliberately chooses is not to recover the Falcon Heavy's center core, not due to a lack of effort, but because of the extremely complex technical challenges involved. The center core faces much harsher conditions compared to the side boosters. It reaches speeds of up to 3,000 m per s, 10,800 km per h, at an altitude of around 100 km, while the side boosters separate at speeds of only about 1,600 to 1,800 m per s. This speed difference creates a series of challenges for recovering the center core. When re-entering the atmosphere, the center core experiences temperatures over 1,000 degrees Celsius due to intense air friction. This requires materials and engines that can withstand extreme heat. Additionally, having used nearly all its fuel to propel the second stage further, the center core has only 5 to 10 percent fuel left for landing compared to the 20 to 30 percent remaining in the side boosters. This demands extremely precise landing maneuvers, performed far offshore, possibly twice as far as the side boosters, at high speeds and altitudes. SpaceX could reserve fuel to land the center booster, but doing so would significantly reduce the rocket's payload capacity. If all three boosters are recovered, Falcon Heavy can only deliver 8 tons to a geostationary transfer orbit GTO. However, by recovering just the two side boosters and sacrificing the center one, this capacity increases to about 16 tons. Yes, double. This substantial increase enables more complex missions with heavier payloads while still maintaining cost effectiveness by recovering the side boosters. If SpaceX can reuse all the booster, this would be a massive saving and the lessons learned from achieving full booster reusability on Falcon Heavy could be applied to future SpaceX projects, such as the Starship system, potentially leading to even more ambitious and cost-effective missions. Astrobotic Griffin? Well, it is definitely going to be a hell of sight to see. We know that SpaceX has demonstrated the potential to recover all three boosters of the Falcon Heavy in the Arabsat 6A mission with a payload of around 6,450 kilograms. At that time, Falcon Heavy not only successfully delivered the satellite into orbit, but also landed all three boosters. This achievement clearly shows that Falcon Heavy can recover its entire propulsion system, even with payloads of six tons or more, for the upcoming Astrobotic Griffin mission, with an estimated payload of less than 6.4 tons. The likelihood of SpaceX successfully recovering all three boosters is very high. Falcon Heavy, despite its lower launch frequency compared to Falcon 9, plays a pivotal role in the space industry, especially for NASA. This rocket has become a reliable workhorse for missions requiring heavy and complex payloads into deep space. Falcon Heavy's impressive achievements include successfully launching the heaviest geostationary satellite Echo Star 24, Jupiter 3, into transfer orbit in July 2023, and placing NOAA's crucial GOES-U weather satellite into orbit in June 2024. Upcoming missions include NASA's Europa Clipper in October 2024, aimed at studying Jupiter's moon Europa and launching key components of the Gateway Space Station around the moon in 2025. These missions not only demonstrate Falcon Heavy's superior technical capabilities, but also reflect strong trust from NASA and leading space organizations. Until Starship achieves stable operation, Falcon Heavy remains a highly reliable vehicle for delivering valuable and top priority payloads into space, solidifying SpaceX's role as an indispensable partner in ambitious space exploration projects and opening new opportunities for future space science and technology. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.